In today's video, I'll be reviewing this Bible. It's the New King James Version Large Print Wide Margin Reference Bible. I did an unboxing video on it, which may interest you as well. To give you a sense for the dimensions, here is how it compares with the Allen 5 Wide Margin. And NKJV is just a bit taller, I believe but not nearly so wide. And similarly, I have here the Schuyler New American Standard. This is the 1995 New American Standard text in a wide margin. And the Schuyler Bible is quite a lot thicker, but again, it's not so wide. Schuyler is thicker and taller. I showed the box at some length on the unboxing video, but uh, here's the back in case you want those details. And we'll try to focus on the ISBN for you, which you should be able to find on the charts at the beginning of the video. By the way, in most of my videos, I um, give you a detailed contents in the commentary in the description section so you can find your place for different topics that are discussed in the video. This Bible is 9 and 11 16 inches tall, 7 and 7 8 inches wide, and 1 and 5 8 inch thick. It is in brown leather soft. The text is formatted in two text columns. Each column is about 68 millimeters wide, so from here to here is about 68. And from here to here is about 68. In general, there are about 44 characters on a line where there are a lot of closely spaced characters and not a lot of wide characters or capitals. So about 44 characters per line. And on some pages, you get as much as 49 lines per column. You have far fewer than that there, but you're approaching 49 here on this page. Page dimensions are 236 millimeters tall, that's 9.3 inches tall, 190 millimeters across, that's 7.48, almost 7.5 inches wide. The text is line matched. You should be able to see that here. Text from the opposite side of the page is overlapping with the text on this side. I like the print. I think it's somewhat sharp, it's dark, and it's bold. And we'll do some font comparisons a little bit later so you can see how it compares with other fonts and uh, Bibles with similar sized fonts. The uh, margins, this is supposed to be a wide margin Bible, but as you can see, only the outer margin is really what you would call wide. And that's why a number of people are disappointed with it. Some people were hoping for a Bible that was wide all around, with a large inner margin, a margin at the bottom, outer and top. But that's not what we have here. The um, margin at the top ranges from 15 to 17 millimeters. The inner margin is as much as 19 millimeters. There are 25.4 millimeters to an inch, by the way. And the reason I use metric units is because I'm able to measure them more carefully. Bottom margin is 15 to 16 millimeters. The outer margin is 29 to 31 millimeters. That's one and three sixteenths inch, approximately. Um, the font here in the text is advertised at 10.5 points. I measure the upper uh, case letters. I just compare them to Times New Roman. And when I do that, the, t the uh, uppercase letters are about as tall as a Times New Roman 10 point. The lowercase letters look to me about the same height as a Times New Roman 11.5. That's something you'll find is commonly done in Bible fonts. Uh, proportionately, the uh, caps are smaller and lowercase letters are larger. That gives you a 
a larger font essentially without cramming the lines too closely together. The line height here is 3.94 millimeters. That's 11.2 points. So with capitals being around 10 and the line spacing 11.2, it strikes me as being very generous. Um, verse numbers are in black at the beginning of the verse. There are no marks for new paragraphs, however, if you compare this to a, a New King James Bible where the text is formatted in the paragraphs, you will not see any indication here. There are no pillcroves, there are no special markings, say a bold um, burst number to indicate the beginning of a paragraph, at least as far as I can tell. The New King James Version is one of those translations that shows Translator supplied smoothing words in italic font, such as here. So own and R are not actually in the, uh, the Hebrew here in Ezekiel. And pronouns for deity are capitalized here. So for instance here, the my and my sheep, the M there is a capital M. This Bible is published by Thomas Nelson, and Thomas Nelson says there are about 72,000 references here. They place them at the bottom of the page, which makes them not quite as accessible, say, as had they been in the center column or along the outside margins. The um, references, you can read back towards the text if you are interested in how Acts 20.33 is used here in this page, then it's easy to find it. You just look here in red, you have 11.9, so you go back up onto the page. Chapter 11, verse 9 here in 2 Corinthians. The, um, as far as I can tell, this is the full set of New King James Version text and translation notes. And the font here at the bottom of the page is about eight and a half points. That's a very rough approximation. It's a sans serif font and it's centered, as you see on the page, so it's not justified to the left or to the right, but centered. The paper quality is the sheet thickness is 37.4 micrometers, and based on that and a, and a guess at the paper density, I estimate the paper weight at 34.2 GSM. That's an estimate. It could be 32, it could be 36. I don't know. The paper has a sheen on the surface, and happily it's not coming across here in this light, but if you look at the unboxing video, you will see that it's a fairly shiny paper. It has a very faint beige tinge, so it's not quite white. There is a obvious show through, you can see it between the lines. I think you saw that earlier when I showed you that the lines were line matched. But you can definitely see print from behind because it is line matched I don't think it causes any kind of trouble at all the uh, print is close to being uniform it's not perfectly so and um, you can see a slight print non-uniformity here at least you couldn't with your naked eyes I'm not sure it shows up on the camera but here page 1204 on the left is just a bit lighter than 1234 on the right. It's hard to show this because of the wide margin in between, but this is lighter than that. There are introductions for each book. They are formatted this way, author, time, key verses, and theme. The font here is about a 10 point font and it is a sans serif font. So these introductions are quite brief, but you have one for every book. Book titles are in the outside top of the page, as are the contents. So this is Mark chapter 1, verse 32. Page numbers are at the center top. Chapter numbers are given in bold, two-line, uh, large capitals in red. Each uh, book begins on a separate page. And as you can see here from Luke 17, the words of Christ are in red. It's a relatively dark red. Um, as longtime viewers know, I am not a fan of red letters. But these are readable, and they do not cause me too much eye strain. I would prefer it had they been, had they been in black ink, but um, 
All things considered, it could be a lot worse. Quotations from the Old Testament that appear in the New Testament are in quotation marks. Uh, there's no special character here, so these are not in all caps as you would find in the New American Standard Bible. They, these quotations are sometimes indented, as you hear, see here in 1 Corinthians 2.9, and sometimes not, as you see here in 1 Corinthians 2.16. After the book of Revelation, with no intervening pages, you'll find the concordance. It's 134 pages long, formatted in three columns. The keywords are in red, all caps. That's about a seven and a half point font. The context lines, um, the caps here look to be about six and a half points tall. The lowercase letters are more like seven and a half. So it's 134 pages long in three columns. At the end of that, we come to a reading plan. It's a one year reading plan. It spans two pages. And it is in about a seven point font. So I'll move this a bit so you can see when you're reading plan here and here. And after that, there is a blank page or two. And then a note regarding the typeface. This is a YK Denmark font, 2K Denmark, sorry thinking Y2K and we have seven color maps that span eight pages and you can see these are on a semi-glossy paper not very detailed they are attractive I would like to try to show you here that you can tell the binding is sewn by looking in the gutter. Here between these maps you can see stitching. The maps do not enter the gutter. At the end of the maps, after map 7, there's a single heavier piece of paper which is the paper liner. The edges of the pages are gilded, gilded. The text block, as we've seen, is um, sewn, so the Bible has absolutely no problem lying open in Genesis. We'll get over to Genesis and show you. So here we are in Genesis 4. It, op it lies open fairly easily. The hinge here is fairly flexible and the page is long which allows gravity to work on it and pull it down, but it will definitely lie open. There is, as we've seen, a paper liner. There are two ribbon markers, you may have noticed. These ribbon markers are 10 millimeters wide. They are 38 centimeters or 380 millimeters long. They are long enough come out to the edges of the corner so that makes them very useful to you they're shiny on both sides that's called double face satin so these are nice wide ribbons you would hope to have wide ribbons in such a wide Bible with large pages let me show you the head and tail bands if we can do that and get them in focus so they're can see behind the ribbons is a brown headband. In the front, we have a presentation page. Not a lot there. The first title page and the second. Telling you it's an NKJV from Thomas Nelson. Holy Bibles in red, containing the Old and New Testaments as sort of an italic font in black ink. So this is the NKJV Wide Margin Reference Bible, copyright 2021 by Thomas Nelson, which own, is owned by HarperCollins, Zondervan is as well. Copyright on the King James Version, New King James is 1982. Um, this is the first printing from 2021 printed in the People's Republic of China. 
So here we are at the table of contents. This is definitely a 66 book Protestant Bible. So here's the New Testament, and then we see the concordance and the one year reading plan listed there at the bottom of the page. And after that, you have the preface to the New King James Version, which runs for a couple of pages. Well, only one. You come to the title page for the Old Testament, and here is the introduction to the book of Genesis. So this is a close-up look at the font. In a moment, we'll do some comparisons. But I think you'll agree with me that this is very attractive. It's nice and dark, which is the way I like a font. It's relatively wide. This is not a skinny, faint, dark gray or even light gray looking font. Line spacing is very good. The tracking here is certainly adequate. You don't see any letters running into each other. There's space between them all. Um, line spacing, the ascenders and the descenders are well separated. So to me, this is very pleasant. Um, what I dislike about it personally is the width. I, uh, I would prefer narrow columns towards the center of the page and the references closer to the verses. But certainly this is very usable. Now, for a comparison, I've brought in from the left the Schuyler Canterbury. This is uh, also a 2K Denmark font, I believe. It's about 11 points, so it should be half a point larger than the font on the right. Um, if your eyes are like mine, though, you greatly prefer the font on the right. It's always been my problem with the Schuyler Quintels and Canterburys that the uh, printing isn't dark enough. I really love the dark print on the right. I'm hoping that the revised standard version that's due to be out from Schuyler in August will be darker than this Canterbury. Now I've brought in from the left the font from the Allen 53. Mine's the brown edition. And um, I like the narrower columns on the left, but still this dark, uh, beautiful font on the right is superior to the one on the left. This is a very much more pleasant reading experience, I believe. If only the paper here weren't shiny. If it were a matte surface like the one on the left, that would be better. Now this is a bit difficult to show because there are wide margins on both these Bibles, but on the left is the... Schuyler New American Standard Wide Margin Bible. Its font's about nine and a half points. Um, and again, it's much fainter than the font on the right. I do like the layout of the Schuyler Wide, wide Margin better, um, but with a large ten and a half point font here, I can see why it was difficult for them to get to create margins all around. For those of you who aren't familiar with the New King James Version as a translation, I recommend that you uh, look at my NKJV versus ESV videos. I give some background there and do quite a lot in the way of uh, comparing the two translations and a number of verses, which should give you a sense for the way it reads. It's essentially a modernized King James Version. Um, in terms of uh, literalness, it is one of the more literal translations that I have scored. Is my translation continuum chart, and you can see it comes in essentially third place behind the American Standard Version slash Revised Version and the King James Version. It is more literal the way I score it than the New American Standard Bible, which surprises some people, but I think if they actually tried my approach themselves and scored all of what I call liberties the same, they would come to the same conclusion. There are other ways to do it, and I'm not saying that uh, what I have here is an absolute measure. You may have a better way of scoring these translations than I. Um, the New Testament is a translation of what's known as uh, the Textus Receptus, which is a family of printed editions from the 16th and 17th centuries. These are based on later Byzantine manuscripts, and as you can see on this chart, 
when I look at 153 verses and look at the textual choices that the translators made, I find that the New King James Version agrees with the Robinson Pierpont Greek New Testament um, about 93% of the time. Uh, it does not agree with the Nestle Elan 28th edition anywhere near so often. That agreement's more like 40%. This is a, in 153 verses. If you're interested in what those 153 verses are, in my um, on my channel you'll find a video that's entitled something like a four-dimensional um, perspective on New Testament translations. This chart shows the Tyndall House Greek New Testament along the x-axis. As you can see, the New King James Version agrees with Tyndall House about 60% of the time. It actually, although the rate isn't that high, it's one of the translations that agrees uh, with Tyndall House more than most. I think it comes in fifth place, perhaps. Then, if you put Westcott in a hort on the x-axis, it essentially reverses the Robinson Pierpont chart we saw earlier. The New King James Version agreement with Westcott and the Hort is only about 15%. Back in the Old Testament, the New King James Version, like the King James Version, sticks fairly close to the Masoretic Hebrew. At least that's my conclusion based on examining 100 Old Testament readings with known variants. On this chart, I scored, uh, awarded one point for each departure from the Masoretic Hebrew. It didn't matter which direction it departed in, towards the Septuagint, towards the Dead Sea Scrolls, towards some other ancient translation. But whatever, whenever there was a departure, I gave it one point. The NKJV has fewer than five such departures. So um, this is a wide margin Bible with only one wide margin. And I think a number of people were hoping, very much hoping, that we would see a wide margin Bible similar to the wide margin that Nelson printed back in the 1980s. Um, if you'd like to see what that looks like, please look at the unboxing video that I showed, I showed it there. Essentially what it was, uh, was a smaller font, closer to nine points, in two narrower columns with center column references and wide margins all around. And a number of people, I think, were hoping for a wide margin Bible that had a wide margin on both sides where you could write your notes close to both sides and then have additional margin space at the bottom and the top of the page for more extensive notes. But we don't have that here. If, however, you get over your disappointment that you don't actually have a wide margin Bible here, but you have a large Bible, as one of the commentators on the unboxing video noted. Um, you have a large Bible with a large, dark, attractive print. You have opaque paper, which I wish weren't shiny, but it is nice and opaque. You have line match text. Um, the references at the bottom of the page here in Schuyler style. I think Crossway does that frequently also. I, I, do not like. I find that makes the uh, references less useful. Um, but you do have them. You have uh, the full set of references, as far as I can tell, the full set of text and translation notes. So those are useful. All in all, uh, although this is not a layout that I would have chosen, I think this is perfectly useful and it has a number of very happy features. In addition, having this one wide margin at least would allow you to supplement the uh, 72,000 72, references with a few of your own. I noticed, for instance, this past week watching a, a video uh, from uh, Dr. James White that the New King James Version does not have a reference in Isaiah 8 back to forward to um, 1st Peter say, say uh, uh, 8 12 um, nor be afraid of their threats nor be troubled the Lord of hosts him shall you hallow 
you look down in 12 and 13 in the notes below, you don't see a reference to 1 Peter 4 where that's quoted. That's unfortunate. But um, the wide margin here allows you to supplement that. So with that, I think I will conclude this video. Hope you enjoyed it, found it useful. Uh, if you did, please remember to hit the like button. Uh, share it on social media if you feel so inclined. And if you are so inclined, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Thanks again for watching.